Hello, this is Jay at Axos Bank. Thanks for joining us today for webinar week. Today is day two, where we are gonna be talking about non-contingent offer strategies, cross-collateralization, bridge loans, and ultimately, our ultimate goal is always to help you have better conversations with your real estate agent partners with the end goal of funding more jumbo and super jumbo production. Now I'm gonna be going through this webinar rather quickly since we've only got 30 minutes. Uh, if you have questions along the way, use the question or the chat box and I will take some on the fly and I will save some time at the end for Q&A. This webinar is also being recorded and we'll be happy to send you a link to the recording if there's anything that you missed or if you want to share it with a friend. So for those of you that are not familiar with Axos Bank, just a high level, you know, originally Bank of Internet, we've been in this space for 20 years. We've been uh, a non-QM lender before non-QM was even a term. And all of that really matters is that we've got a lot of money to lend and that we're really good at doing it. We've always been known for a handful of niche programs, pledged assets, asset depletion, cross collateralization, which we're gonna be talking about today, jumbo loan amounts up to 30 million. We're gonna talk about bridge loans and specifically uh, today, again, non-contingent offer strategies. Now, if you think back over the past year, uh, a non-contingent offer was significantly different than it might be today. You know, in the past, because the market was hot, multiple offers, over asking, nobody wanted to take an offer that was contingent upon some other action. So now the non-contingent component is a little bit different, where we're talking about uh, maybe a property doesn't have to be sold today, but they want to buy now and ultimately sell later. So what does that mean in conversation with your real estate partners? Well, think about the current market conditions. If prices are softening and you want to transact now why the price is lower than it was previously, and you're not quite ready to sell your existing home, we've got multiple solutions for that. Now your real estate agent partners are looking for solutions. Think about your average realtor right now. Just like you, they're experiencing a downturn, they're experiencing fewer units, they're experiencing uncertainty and fear. And what do most uh, homeowners do when they're uncertain? They do nothing. They just wait. And this is a, a new path for you to be able to create a new conversation with these partners to get people to transact now instead of later. So we have a handful of ways that you can accomplish this. And we're going to go into all of these at a very high level. Again, please take notes, ask questions, and then we'll save some time at the end if uh, your questions don't get answered along the way. So Axos offers several solutions. We're gonna cover first cross collateralization, but we will also talk today about bridge, sale, uh, bridge to sale, and we'll also to talk about omitting the departing debt from a home uh, and how you can solve a DTI issue by not having to consider the debt on the exit property. So first, let's talk about cross collateralization. So in the conversations with your real estate agent partners, I would just ask them, do you have clients that want to buy, but they're not ready to sell? Any producing real estate agent has a book of listing prospects that are waiting for some thing to occur, right? In the past, they were afraid. If I put a sign in the yard, it sells too fast. I'm not going to be able to find another home. Well, now the circumstances are different where there's significantly larger pool of homes to choose from, but they may not be ready to sell. And that's where cross collateralization can come in. What we're going to do is take one loan and record it against both houses. Now, if they have 10% down on their acquisition property, which is the ideal, you know, most people when they're planning on buying a new home, don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm gonna go buy a house today. They're usually saving some money, they're positioning themselves, maybe they've taken some debt against their existing house, maybe they've got some gift money on the side, like whatever that is, there's usually a down payment solution. 
if they have at least 10% down, then we will allow you to cross their existing home, meaning I'm going to record my acquisition loan against the house, and I'm going to record it against their departing residence, or I can also cross second homes and investment properties as well. We'll talk about how to get to multiple crosses in a minute. Just know that this is only available on our portfolio product. Now, if they don't have at least 10% down, we will allow 100% acquisition financing on the subject, provided that the effective loan to value is 15% below my published guidelines, which published guidelines are 70% to 2 million or 65% to 5 million on a purchase. So if my effective LTV were 50% in an example, that would meet the uh, ELTV requirements. Effective loan to value, that's a new term. That's just taking the total debt divided into both values. So think about that. If you hear us mention ELTV or when you're talking to your account executive, effective loan to value, that's what we mean. The debt divided into both properties, right? So if you've got 12 months reserves and 15% below the published guidelines, you don't even need a down payment. Now, let me show you what that might look like. So in my example on your screen, I've got somebody that's stepping down in a purchase. So they own a property worth 2.45 and they're buying a 1.5 property. So in this example, the total values are 3950. Now, this borrower happens to have an existing first on their property of 375,000. Now, since I want to be in a first position on both loans, I'm sorry, on both homes rather, I'm gonna pay that loan off with my acquisition debt. So in this example, I've got a 1.5 purchase price, I've got a 375 payoff, so my total loan amount is 1,875,000. I divide that into my total value of 3,950, and you can see that my effective loan to value is 47%. Now, as I mentioned previously, if the effective LTV is 15% or more below the published guidelines, then that deal works with no down payment. So think about this anytime that you've got somebody that's doing a step down, has a ton of equity, maybe a small first. Um, you know, sometimes we'll make an exception to leave the first in place. We had a recent transaction where the, the borrowers had a, a two and a, I think two and five eighths on a 30 year fixed rate. Uh, on their existing primary and they didn't plan on selling it, they were gonna convert it to a rental. So we uh, made an exception to record our lien in a secondary position behind that. So just always be having a conversation with your account executive. We wanna know what is the exit strategy? What are their plans? What's it gonna look like when they're moving? Are they gonna retain the property as a rental? And we, we have exit uh, conversations so that we know how to properly structure the loan, not just from a LTV perspective, but also from a compensation perspective. Uh, if you're doing a borrower paid transaction, for example, versus lender paid. Some of our broker partners use lender paid transactions. And if a borrower is going to be paying our loan down or paying our loan off, we wanna avoid the EPO uh, early payoff conversation. So just again, transparency with your account executive is the key. Now. I mentioned that we have a few different solutions when it comes to a departing residence. If you've got at least 30% equity in the departing home and it's not sold, but it's actually on the market, then what we will allow you to do to omit that debt is just take a copy of the listing agreement. Um, we need to have six months reserves on their exit debt. And then we want to evaluate again, what is the, exit strategy. So in this case, we know it's going to be sold because it's listed and it's on the market. So I'm going to omit that departing debt from my consideration if they meet those criteria. Now, if it's not yet listed or not yet on the market, we might consider that uh, in two different paths. We would say, okay, let's get a 1007 on the property to establish fair market value. I might do an internal AVM to make sure that I've got at least a 30% equity position on that because ultimately in a softer market, right, that house might be on the market uh, even uh, longer than they expect or maybe they're not quite ready to put it on the market. Maybe they've got to do some improvements. They want to get it ready um, or maybe they're just undecided 
like, I don't know, maybe we want to test the rental market and see what that looks like. So we can accommodate all of those potentialities as long as we've got the supporting documentation. So if somebody says, hey, I, I'm probably going to rent it, but I'm not 100% sure I might sell it. I'm going to play the market. Well, give me that LOE. Let's get a 1007 uh, comparable rent schedule on that departing residence if I'm not crossing it with my existing lien. And then we can evaluate that. These are all done case by case. Uh, as a portfolio lender, you know, this is the proverbial out of the box. We're looking for solutions to help you close deals. And that's really what I want you to leave this webinar with is real estate agents are looking for loan originators that can help them provide solutions and close deals. It's not just, hey, we've got great rates and fast service. Yeah, so does everybody, right? But if you were to ask your real estate professionals, how many listing opportunities did your current mortgage guy give you over the past 12 months? I would guess in most cases, that answer is a zero, maybe one, but it's never a one-to-one -one relationship, right? Like a uh, realtor isn't giving a lead to a loan officer and saying, hey, help my borrower. And oh, by the way, where's a new listing or a new buyer lead, right? It's just not a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. But where you differentiate yourself is if you have a conversation with a real estate agent and you say, hey, agent, um, do you have a book of prospects that would buy now if they didn't have to sell? Or maybe they're not ready to sell. And they say, yeah, absolutely. I say, great. Let's talk about how we can move them into action today instead of someday maybe. And here's how. I can qualify them for the purchase without having to sell that house today. If I get a listing agreement on that, I can omit the departing debt. So think about this. If you're the real estate agent, you're going to represent a buyer that was kind of a wait and see guy sitting on the fence. And you're going to have a listing agreement because you know you're going to sell that property down the line. And since now you've got this listing, maybe it's not on the market, maybe it's a pocket listing, you're going to go out and find the buyer. So, hey, realtor, you know, if your average sales price is 750 grand, you know, you just have a potential for uh, 45, almost 50 grand in commissions that didn't exist before. It was just wait and see. Now, trust me, if you help your real estate agent partner generate an extra 20, 30, 40 grand in commissions, do you think you're going to become their go-to resource when it's time for any loan? Absolutely. I can assure you. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I was an originator for 20 years prior to coming to the bank nine years ago. All of your account executives are highly talented professionals, and they understand our culture, our credit philosophy, and how to put deals together. So the key is don't ever uh, turn away a loan opportunity without having a conversation with your Axos AE. And again, we structure some of the craziest deals. Uh, the example that I'm sharing on the screen here is a deal that we closed in 2021 where these people were buying down. They were buying a 1.350 uh, home, but they had 565K on their existing mortgage. So this deal looks weird, right? Because I'm giving them uh, 140 LTV, right? I did a $1.9 million loan amount. But because my effective LTV was 50%, this deal works. So now, this guy's got two homes, qualified for the full loan, and I'm in a first position on both properties, and everybody lives happily ever after, okay? So again, just be thinking about this. I'm going to pause for a second. If you've got uh, any questions about crosses before we move on to bridges, or if there's any questions about how to omit departing debt, just remember cross collateralization. If you've got... Um, a loan amount greater than 1.5 on your acquisition property, I need two full appraisals and we reconcile those to the lesser of the price or the reviewed value. I always need one appraisal on your exit property on the cross. And if we're uh, looking at potential rents from that property, we're gonna require a 1007 to support the projected rents on that. And again, the key is reach out to your AE, have a conversation. Let us see the collateral addresses. If you know the properties, we can do the research and we can give you a lot of insight as to what we like. You know, as a portfolio lender, we like borrowers with great collateral, with lots of liquidity that are willing and able to pay us back. 
So start with that. I'm going to pause here for a question. Hey, Sean, good to see you. Are gift funds allowed on the acquisition property? Yes, 100% gift funds are allowed. Now, we're not talking about pledged assets today. That's for tomorrow's webinar, but you can also use pledges instead of gifts to get the higher down payments. But if it's an all cash gift from an acceptable party, so if it's owner occupied, we're looking for family members, relationships, uh, donors can be associates, partners, things like this, and standard gift documentation. If it's less than a million and they wire it directly to escrow, generally you'll just need a gift letter, uh, wire transfer confirmation, and uh, their occupation. If they're a foreign borrower, then we're also going to run them through BSN, uh, Bank Secrecy Act. That's our division that looks into the background of foreign borrowers. Okay, another question. Edgar, how much with each loan that was recorded on each property? Oh, see, that's a great question. So, Edgar, we don't allocate the loan um, dollars to each property. I'm recording my entire full deed of trust against both homes, okay? So, in the example on the Pismo property, my loan was recorded at $1.9 million on both houses. Now, ultimately, when they want to sell the departing residence, I'm going to have a requirement for them to pay my loan down to my required effective LTV. So, for example, if my sales price was $1,350,000, my guidelines, I'd have to be at a 65 LTV on a cross. So, that means they need to pay me down to eight seventy seven. 500 when I want to release that other property. Great question. Uh, another one here. What is the minimum loan amount? So on our portfolio, the minimum loan amount is 500K. Why does that matter? Well, each individual property has to be able to carry the minimum loan amount. So for example, if you said, hey, I've got this property over here in Bakersfield that's worth 250 and it's owned free and clear, and I've got this one over here uh, in Lodi that's worth 500, so my total values are 750, can I do a cross? The answer to that is no. Each individual property has to carry the minimum loan amount. So we can't get in the conversation on the cross until you're dealing with property values in the 750 to 800 range and higher, okay? Great question. So I'm gonna move on to bridge. And right now we've got 12 minutes left. I'm gonna bang through this high level and then uh, keep the questions coming. These are all great questions. So bridge to sale. When you think about a bridge loan, what most people are thinking about old school is a subordinate lien on a house that's listed for sale to come up with the down payment for the acquisition property. That's not our bridge loan. Our bridge loan is specifically for a home that is on the market to be sold, and we're just going to give them straight 60% cash to be able to pull off a new purchase. Now, I may or may not be participating in that purchase. We'll talk about that in a minute. So. Think about it like this. If you've got somebody with a ton of equity that needs to go pull off a cash purchase, a bridge to sale could be your solution. If it's on the market, I'm going to give them 60% cash out, and I'm going to fund a 12-month reserve payment account to make auto payments from, and then I don't need to meet any ability to repay standard. So their DTI could literally be 1,000%, and I'd be okay because I'm using those 12 months payments in reserve. Now, since our minimum loan amount by guideline is a million dollars, you have to have a property that's worth 1.8 million before we get into the game on a bridge loan. But this past year, we said, hey, maybe we wanna look at lowering our bridge loan requirement, meaning the minimum down to our 500 floor. And now we will do that if they are using Axos for the acquisition loan as well. So we already talked about how I would omit the departing debt from consideration on a home that's listed for sale. Well, in this case, I'm doing it for myself. So if you have a borrower who's exiting a property where the loan amount, maybe they own it free and clear and they need 600 grand to pull off their purchase, I'll give them that 600 grand as long as they are doing the acquisition financing with an Axos loan on the purchase. Okay, so think about this. Who can use this? Well, every real estate agent that's got a property that's been on the market too long, hasn't sold, and those people want to move on, 
Think about them. Think about your developers. Let's say they finished up a house at just the wrong time as the market was turning down and listings were staying on longer, but they've got another project that's on the table that they're supposed to start building. Well, I'm happy to give that guy 60% all cash out, even if they're not income qualified. Now I do need the two most recent filed tax returns, personal, in the loan to paper my file correctly from a regulatory perspective, but the ability to repay is being supported by the 12 month reserve account. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is a 12 month interest only loan, current terms nine and a quarter, point to Axos. And if for some reason the home hasn't sold within those 12 months, then we will consider a six month extension with a half point fee and 500 bucks for docs. Um, and when they demonstrate that they are actively attempting to sell that property, right? This isn't just a slick way to get a stated income loan. The exit strategy has to be the sale of the home. We don't offer this for foreign national borrowers and a minimum FICO score of 680 subject to exceptions. I wanna show an example of a live deal. Uh, I closed this a couple of years ago. This retiree couple, had a small retirement income, I think about five or six grand a month. So they couldn't qualify for a $1.4 million loan. They found a house that they wanted to buy. The market was hot then, right? So they needed to make an all cash offer. So what did we do? Their current house was on the market in Newport Beach for 3.2 million. So we gave them 1.6, which gave them a little walking around money. It gave them enough money to fund the 12 month reserve account, which is the interest only payment only. And then it gave them the 1.4 million in cash to be able to pull off that purchase. So we started extracting the auto pay of uh, the month following their closing. And I think they made two or three payments. They ended up selling that house for 2.9 million. And again, everybody lived happily ever after. Another uh, awesome deal that we did in Newport Beach, this one was very, very interesting. So uh, Corona Del Mar property appraised for 11.5 million. We gave a loan amount of 6.9, which was a 60 LTV. And then they took 2.1 in cash after we paid off their underlying lien and they were able to acquire an additional piece of real estate. So again, I want you to be thinking about these conversations with your real estate partners, especially if you want to break into the jumbo market. For those of you that are, are wanting to do jumbo and super jumbo loan amounts, when you have these types of conversations with luxury agents, uh, you are going to differentiate yourself from the rest of the field. Okay, it looks like I've got a few more questions. I'm going to pause here. We've got about seven minutes left in the day. Uh, again, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. A lot of friendly faces I see out there. Hey, Tracy, good to see you. Cheryl, thanks for showing up. Tara, good to see you. Uh, let's see, are these loans with prepayment penalty? Uh, Pradeep, no. If you're doing a bridge loan, obviously with the exit strategy, there is no prepay. If you're doing an owner-occupied property, there is no prepay. Even if you cross a non-owner occupied property, if your subject property is a primary residence, then no prepayment penalty. Now do be aware, if you're crossing real estate with an exit strategy of paying us down, the most popular structure is a borrower paid compensation deal. You can do lender paid comp, however, if they pay that loan off within 180 days, you know the last thing you want is me showing up with a tire iron to collect your commission, right? We want to make sure that you get and stay paid. Great question. Uh, got another question. What is the rate for the acquisition on the purchase in the last example? So Bruce, thank you. So our portfolio rates on the wholesale side start at 6.75, that's our floor. So we don't do anything less than 6.75. So if you took the cross hit, which is a half, that would put you at seven and a quarter, in the example I had, my borrower's FICO score was below, or sorry, above 740, so they got an eighth improvement. So their final rate in that example in today's price would be seven and an eighth at par, and then you would charge your compensation on top of that. Uh, let's see, I have another question here. Uh, could family member property be used as a collateral purchase? 
Okay, this is a unique one, right? So in most cases, we want the vesting to match across all properties, meaning that uh, whoever my buyers are need to also be on the cross property. So if you're if you've got some family member that wants to participate by saying, hey, you can use my house over here, just know that I'm gonna want them all to be borrowers, okay? That's a case by case. And then also multiple properties in different states. So let's say for example, you've got a borrower that's buying a property in California and they're leaving a property in Hawaii and you're not licensed in Hawaii. Well, I don't really care. My subject property is in California, so as long as you're licensed in the state in which the subject property is, my cross collateral property, uh, you do, do not need separate licensing there. Uh, let's see, let me go to the question box. We're here, we got four minutes left. Get them in while you can. Uh, let's see, uh, we already talked about minimum loan amount. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anybody here. Hey, Gene from South Florida, welcome. Okay, let's see, uh, bank statement loans, yes. Can you use bank statement loans for qualifying? So Axos portfolio allows you alternative documentation, bank statements to a 65 max LTV, 60 max LTV if using interest only. So if you had a cross and a bank statement loan, let's say that your loan amount was 5 million, then you would have to cut your effective LTV by 5% to 60% in order for that to work. So again, if you've got free and clear properties, borrowers with a lot of equity, or maybe you need to combine two properties on top of your subject to be able to meet the effective loan to value guideline, those are all viable options. Uh, let's see, Mark asks, hey, can we get this deck? No, I don't distribute our slide deck, but yes, we will send you the link to be able to uh, review this recorded webinar. Thanks for your interest on that one. Turn times for bank statement loans. So currently, under current time turn times, you've got two days at intake. That's when you upload your loan and it gets disclosed. You've got two days in processing, which is our service level. We turn them in one day if it's a well-processed file. And then underwriting is currently quoting three days on a purchase, four days on a refi, and add one additional day for bank statement qualifying. Now. If you've got the bank statements in advance and you wanna have us analyze it to make sure that you're on track, you can send those to us and we will have our team of awesome bank statement analysis, uh, analysts rip into those and make sure that your borrower is able to qualify. Great question. Let's see, Norman says, hey, I got here late. No problem, Norman, we got you. Yes, we can send you links to review this webinar. Okay, so we are two minutes from the top of the hour. Uh, as I mentioned up front, best webinars start on time and end early. So that's my objective and goal today. Um, please stay connected with your account executives. If you need to get to them, if you don't recall who they are, shame on us. Uh, email me, jshoop at axosbank.com. 858-753-3157 is my direct number. And I will make sure that you get the support that you need. And again, have new conversations with your real estate agent partners. Go deep with them. Help them understand how can they survive in this market? What are they doing? You know, and literally ask them, you know, what are you doing to adapt to consumer behavior that's changing right now? You know, and then help them. Show them how they can transact. Show them how they can create new deals and become the go-to resource for their complex and big loan amounts. Again, I wanna say thanks for the time. Thanks for taking it, uh, you know, uh, we really appreciate you. You know, we know that you've got headwinds that you're facing. We, we wanna be here as a solution for you. And we're always coming up with new ideas and products and programs to be able to assist you. So thank you, we appreciate you. Have a great day.